And it's Mike from Wooly Bug. And Darren from Piscator Flies. Hey guys, this is Mike from Wooly Bug. Today, Darren will be showing you how to tie the squirmy wormy. Although not welcomed by all in the sport of fly fishing, this pattern is extremely effective, especially when fishing for stock trout, including Great Lakes steelhead. I like to drop the squirmy wormy off of a nymph pattern, such as a hare's ear, and allow it to swing freely in the current. At the end of this video, you can tap or click a link to watch me successfully fish this pattern on the Genesee River. Here are the materials you'll need to tie this pattern, and Darren will show you how. Thanks, Mike. Let's get a fresh hook in the vise. Today I'm using a Mustad Signature S60-3399A, and this will be a size 10. Mike says he usually ties these and fishes these in a size 14. So size 10 to around 16 should be good, and we've already got a 3.2 millimeter chartreuse brass bead on there. We've got for our thread, we're using a red flat wax nylon, 210 denier. So just push our bead back and put on a very thin layer of thread. Then we're going to take one of these squirmy wormies, and this one is in the bloodworm red. And we're going to measure this out to about an inch and a half, just in front of the hook eye. And then we'll kind of stretch that and I like to place it on the side stretch it out place it on the side and pinch it and then we'll put a, a wrap of thread in there and just before we kind of commit to that just like to stretch it out just a little bit more and then if we start tying it out on the side you can see it kind of rolls up to the top and then we stretch it out as we wind back and then we'll clip that off. And we want to make sure that we keep the tension on there so that the worm material doesn't compress back on itself. And I'm just going to add a single half hitch here. If you want to do a full whip finish, you can go ahead. And for the bead, I like to find something that has a little bit of wiggle room on the hook shank. So this one has lots of room so I can put a thin layer of thread with some material down and it can still slip that bead over. So we continue wrapping our thread on the other side of the bead and we make sure we wrap over those uh, wraps that we had from the front section and then we measure out our back section, our tail, and I like to have it equivalent to what we had in the front. So again we'll just stretch that out and we'll kind of pinch the material against the hook shank and we'll add couple wraps in there and then if you can see it rolls itself back up onto the top of the hook shank so we'll put a few wraps in there just to kind of secure it in place and this stuff's a little bit tricky to work with so don't beat yourself up if it takes you a few tries to kind of get the feel for it and so we'll just start wrapping this we'll stretch it and wrap it forward and if you let it go, it actually kind of catches itself. So it'll, when you stretch it and let the tension off, it kind of sticks to itself. So we'll wrap it up, back, and then up again. It kind of creates a nice soft uh, gummy body to it. And then we'll catch it right behind the bead. We're going to make sure that we go both in behind and in front of that material a couple times. And because it is so stretchy, you want to give yourself a little bit of a tag. You don't want to cut it flush there. And one important thing to remember is not to use a glue like Sally Hans is on here. You might be able to get away with a little bit of Solares UV glue or even a little bit of... Uh, water-based head cement. So we're going to add a couple series of whip finishes and I like to use my hand to whip finish here just because it's a little bit easier to get around that 
front tentacle, the front of the worm. And there you have it. That's your squirmy wormy. So there you have Mike's version of the squirmy wormy. It's got uh, red squirmy wormy material as well as the fluorescent bead. And it's a really nice target for fish to hit. So a number of other different colors we can tie this in. There's the earthworm brown, hot pink, the blood worm we used here today, fluorescent orange, or the San Juan red. It's a bit more of a classic red color. Um, as I said before, make sure you try this out a few times. Don't get discouraged if you have a little bit of trouble getting the material set properly. Just try it. Get out there and have some fun. Hey Tires, thanks for checking out our video. Please take a minute and check out Mike's excellent on the water vlogs over at the Woolly Bug YouTube channel. I've got some links in the description that you can follow. If you enjoyed the video and want to show a bit of support for what we're doing here, why not give it a thumbs up? Make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon to get updated on the latest fly patterns, books, and reviews. If you have any questions or comment, leave a message below. We make sure to answer each and every one. Until next time, this is Darren saying keep a hook in your vice. Cheers.